for today's lesson, we will be discussing about the discrete probability distribution. So in this video, we will be discussing the random variables. We will also discuss the different kinds of random variables and we will proceed with the discrete probability distribution. So let's start first with the definition of a random variable. So when you say random variable, it is a numerical quantity that is assigned to the outcome of an experiment. So let's say we have here R. So that is an example of a random variable and it represents the number of ripe bananas. So you have an experiment and we assign quantity to our random variable based on the outcome of our experiment. So let's say I want to count the number of ripe bananas in every basket. And then let's say you have P, which is another random variable. So uh, let's say that is for the number of heads in a toss coin. So that is again based on the outcome of our experiment. Now there are two types of uh, random variables. So the two types of random variables, first one is the discrete random variable. So when we say discrete random variable, uh, it is one that can assume only a countable number of values. So that means we use counting numbers to assign values to our random variable. For example, number of pencils in a box. So you can count the number of pencils, uh, number of defective flashlights. So we can again count using counting numbers. So another variable is what we call as the continuous random variable. So here, uh, can assume infinite number of values in one or more intervals. In short, these are numbers that cannot be counted or uh, it involves decimals. For example, length of wire ropes. So that involves decimal, uh, let's say, uh, 4.5 meters. And then we have weight of professional boxers. So that is an example also of continuous random variable. So let's say we have this problem here. Suppose two coins are tossed and we are interested to determine the number of heads that will come out. Let us use H to represent the number of heads that will come out. Determine the values of our random variable H. So the experiment here is tossing of two coins and what we want is to determine the number of heads for every outcome. And then we have this H right here, which is our random variable, and it represents the number of heads that will come out on our experiment. So what we will do is we have to determine out the values of our random variable H. So to do it, we should have this uh, table right here with two columns. First is the outcome. Second one is we have number of heads, or that will be the value of H. First thing that we have to do is to list down all of the possible uh, combinations or possible values or outcomes of our experiment. Since we are tossing two coins, so what are the possible outcomes? First is that can be two heads, can also be head and tail, tail head and two tails. So these are now the possible outcomes or this is what we call as our sample space. Now, we have to put it here in our table, so the outcome, so we have heads, two heads here, heads and tail, tail heads, and then two tails. Now, since our concern is to count the number of heads in each outcome, so what we will do is we have to count the number of heads and then put it here in the second column. So we have uh, two, and then we have here one, we have one, and then zero here. Now, how did we get 2? So, we have 2H for the first outcome. We have 1, and then we have 1 here, and then 0. So, therefore, the values of H now. So, to write the values of H, we just have to write the unique values of H. We have 2, 1, and 0. So, next is we have what we call as the probability distribution of a discrete random variable. So, after you identify the values of our random variable, so we now assign probabilities to each values. So the probability distribution of a discrete random variable is a correspondence that assigns probabilities to the values of a random variable. It is also called the probability mass function. So before we start to create the probability distribution of our discrete random variables, so let's take note of the following first. So for any discrete random variable x, the following are true. 
So this one, the one that you see here, this is what we call as the probability of x. So the probability of x should be greater than or equal to 0 but less than or equal to 1 for each value of x. So the probability for each should be in between 0 and 1 only. And another one, the summation of the probability of x should be equal to 1. So that means if we add all of the probabilities of our random variable, so it should be equal to 1. Now here are the steps in constructing the probability distribution. So first, you list the sample space of the experiment, like what we did a while ago. Next, you count the occurrence of the random variable in each outcome and assign a number to this outcome. After that, we will be constructing down the frequency distribution of the values of the random variable. So we will be counting how many times uh, or what's the frequency of each random variable based on our first table. And last is to construct the probability distribution of the random variable by getting the probability of occurrence of each value of the random variable. So later, you will see how are we going to identify the probability of each random variable. So let's just go back to our example a while ago. So this is our first table. We know that the value of our h is 2, 1, 0. So these are the values of our random variable. So next, you have to create another table. So you have here the number of heads, number of occurrence, or the frequency, and then you have the probability of h. So for this one, you have to put here the value of h. So we have 2, 1, and 0. And for the number of occurrence, you just have to count how many times did it to appear from our first table, how many times did 1 appeared in our first table, and how many times did 0 appeared in our table. Remember, here is our 2, 1, 0. These are the values of h. That means these are the number of heads that we can obtain for each outcome. So how many times can we get two? Two heads. How many times can we get one? And how many times can we get none at all? So the number of occurrence for two is we have one. For one is we have two. So we can get uh, one head twice. One can be HT, the other one can be TH. And then last is for zero number of heads, so that's only one occurrence. So in total, we have four. So the total of the frequency should be equal with the outcome or the number of outcomes that we have. Now, in getting the probability, all we have to do is... So you divide the frequency by the total. So first, we have here 1, so that's the frequency divided by 4, so that's 1 fourth. Then we have 2 divided by 4 also, or that will be 1 half. Then we have 1 divided by 4, so 1 fourth. Now if we get the total of these, 1 fourth plus 1 half plus 1 fourth, that should be equal to 1. So this is now the probability distribution of our random variable h. So just to make it clear, we can draw a separate table and then we have here h which is our random variable we have p of h or the probability of h so let's just write here 2 1 and 0 these are the values of our random variable and let's write here the corresponding probabilities so for 2 i have 1 fourth and then for 1 i have 1 half and then for 0 i have 1 fourth again so these are the probabilities for each random variable. So you can say that the probability that I can get two heads for each outcome is one fourth and so on. Let's just have another example. A basket contains five red balls and five blue balls. Three balls are taken one after the other. Let R be the random variable representing the number of red balls taken. Construct the probability distribution of the random variable. So there are 10 balls in a basket. Five of them is red, five of them is blue. Then we have to take three balls one at a time. So we have to identify now what are the possible uh, 
combinations that we can get and then we have here the random variable r which represents the number of red balls taken so we will be counting later on the number of red balls for each um, set of three that we will get so now first thing that we have to do is to list down all of the possible outcomes so the possible outcomes is first we can have um, three red balls next we can have one blue ball and then the two are red and then uh, we can have first ball is red second one is blue third one is red and then the first two are both red and then the third one is blue it can also be um, one red ball and then two blue balls then blue ball first and then we have red and then blue again and we can have two blue first and then we have the red ball and lastly we can have three blue balls so these are the possible outcomes that we can get if we will draw three balls in a basket containing five red balls and five blue balls so now let's count here the number of red balls for each outcome so here we have three red balls second is we have two only the third one is we have two we also have two here here we only have one red ball we have one also here another one and here is no red balls at all so these are now the value or the number of red balls for each outcome now from here we can identify the values of our r which is our random variable so we have three two one and zero so these are now the values of our random variable so now we can create a table here so let's write the values of our random variable 3 2 1 and 0 and then let's now count the frequency of each uh, number or value of r so for 3 it only appeared once so we have 1 for 2 if we will go back here so we have 1 2 and 3 so the frequency should be 3 for 1, we also have 1, 2, and 3. So the frequency here should be 3. And for 0, we only have 1. So we have 1 here. So if we will get the total of this, 6, 7, 8. Which is again equal to the number of outcomes that we have. Now, let's uh, write the probability for each frequency. Or each random variable. So just have to divide. So 1 over 8, or 1 divided by 8. 3 divided by 8 3 divided by 8 or that's 3 eighths and then 1 8 if you get the sum of these so you add the numerator 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 3 7 plus 1 is 8 so 8 over 8 or 1 so these are now the probability of our each random variable so we can have the table so let's write here the values of r 3 2 1 and 0 and and let's write here the probability for each so for three is one third we have three over eight three over eight and one eight by the way this one should be one eight there so these are now again the probability of our random variables now let's just answer some questions here using the table that we created so what is the probability that there are three red balls drawn so let's just go back to our table since we are drawing um, three balls from the basket what now is the probability that we will get what now is the probability that what we will get is or contains three red balls so remember r here which is our random variable this represents the number of red balls so there are four values it can be three it can be two one or zero so we can get three we can get two red balls we can have one or none at all so if we want to get the probability that there are three red balls so you just have to look here so this one three and then get the probability which is one eight so therefore the probability that we will get three red balls is one eight so we can write it also as like this probability that the red ball 
is equal to 3. So our answer here is 1 over 8. What now is the probability that less than 2 red balls are drawn? So let's just again go back to the table. Since what we need is that uh, we should only get less than 2 red balls. That means the values that we are considering here are 1 and 0. Because those are the values less than 2. So what we can do here is uh, we can just add the probability for 1 and 0. And then that will be the probability for uh, getting less than 2 red balls. So we can write here probability that our r is less than 2. So what we will do is we will add this. So 3 over 8 plus 1 over 8. So you have 4 over 8 or 1 half. So that's the probability now that we will get less than 2 red balls. And again, when we say less than 2, that means the possible values that we can have are 1 and 2 only. And last question, what is the probability that there is at least one red ball drawn? When you say at least one, that means one is already the minimum value. So it should be uh, greater than or equal to one. So that means we have to consider three, two, and one. Because again, uh, we have to compute the probability that there is at least one red ball. So we can get three, we can get two, or just only one. So to write it here, probability that our r is greater than or equal to one. Because again, what we need is just at least one. And then what we will do is you just have to add again the three probabilities. So one eight plus three over eight plus three over eight. So you have 4 plus 3, that's 7 over 8. So that is now the probability that what we will get is at least one red ball. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about the random variables, the two types of the random variables, as well as how to create the probability distribution of a discrete random variable. And see you next time.